Welcome to the living room. Welcome to the living room. This is exciting. It is exciting. We have been on a wild journey, babe. It's true. Welcome home. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we wanted to, listen, to be transparent, we've done this like 58 times. And we did it the no. first time. We started from the beginning of our story. We did it the second time. We kind of had the beginning and, and today. Or not the beginning. We like talked about a lot of different things besides today. And so what we've decided is we're going to give y'all a punchline right in the beginning, where we are today, who we are, what we're doing. And then we're going to take you all the way back to tell you how we got here. Oh, my goodness gracious. Is that good? That's going to be a 16 part series for. Yeah, for the first season, we're going to do about 10 seasons of this thing because <laughs> our story is going to live on forever. <clears throat> right. It is good. So anyway, um, hopefully we're, we're Darren and Monica. And uh, to give you the punchline today, what we're up to. Babe, why don't you break the news to them, to these beautiful people out there? Boom! Welcome to the Strong Family's newest, newest edition. edition. Baby number eight. Baby number eight. You feel great? Do this spring. Feel good about baby number eight? Oh, yes, I feel great about baby number eight. We thought we were going to have four kids. Our plan was four kids, and God had a better plan. Yeah what he would call a double portion. I love it. And we're all for it. So anyway, um, to give you a little bit about our backstory, our, we have, this will be our eighth kid. And so our progression has been our oldest is a girl. Then we had a boy and then we had a girl and then we had a boy and then we had another girl. We were so in a we, nice little flow. We were in the flow. So we thought the next baby was going to be a boy. It wasn't, it was a girl. So then we thought for sure the next baby is going to be a boy. It wasn't. It was a girl. <laughs> so when we went to this ultrasound, Monica is rolling up in her confident, holy, prophetic clothing. Oh, saying, yeah. This Everything is was blue. <laughs> she done bought boot, but baby, she done bought boy baby clothes and everything with tractors on it. <laughs> and it was a girl. Four girls in a row. Oh my Have you recovered Lord. yet? No. You were shocked. Uh, I think you were more shocked I than want... our two boys. Yeah, I'm so bewildered. I want more men for Darren to raise. So it is, it is. And my, our second son's response was. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Salem. And if anybody knows Salem, then you know. You he know, he is quite the character. He is a comedian. That was his response. The boys wanted a boy so bad. Oh, they did. They and did. so, yes, the only thing that is like, you know, twinging on, pulling on my heart is that I want. I want Darren to raise more sons. He is such an amazing man. I want him to duplicate himself into the earth. But we, are, God, also girls need a daddy, yeah. a dada, yeah, and totally. um, and so we are obviously preparing future wives. So oh, that's we're up for the that's, task. Yeah. So I'm we excited. have six girls. I we will have girls. six girls and boys. two boys. Four girls, girls in a row. I just I just can't, I can't believe make it. This stuff up. And they will, they will be four girls under four. Can't make this stuff up. <laughs> so that's oh, us. So we're excited. So, we just found that out, literally. You know, and we are going to document it all, just like we documented Zion's yeah. pregnancy, and people got to experience that with us. That was so exciting, yeah. and we got to share that. Yeah. And you know, that's exciting to be able to share on a platform where there's other big families and people that celebrate that with you. Yes. Sadly, a lot of people this day and age don't celebrate large families here in America. You're kind of, uh, you're kind of not the norm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand <laughs> it. So it's cool. So we're going to make it normal again. So, um, because the, no, should I say that I'm Stop. a jokester too. So maybe I shouldn't say that's too soon. But um, rain it in, um, <laughs> rain it in. I can already, I just know, I know where you're going and I, I feel it. Just All right, rain, so listen, we're excited. rain it in. We're okay. Excited. So we Baby got lots of updates. Six that's girls. the happy huh? update. The MJ. Huh? Can I do that? But that's all good. Anyway, um, I text my brothers and you know, I said, girl, you know, another girl, whatever. I text them a little video thing. And uh, one of them texts back and said, you gonna have your hands full like future. I said, my hands is full right now. <laughs> what are you talking about? 
Anyway, so that's talking about marriages and all that stuff. Yeah. How cool is it going to be that I will literally get to perform every single ceremony of our daughters? You're, gonna, why are you going there? I don't know, but I just <laughs> thought about that when they said the marriage is going to be Not only do I oh, to walk them down the aisle, I'll, that's I'll literally get to put the fear of the Lord into whatever boy is standing in front of me, <laughs> literally the fear of the Lord, um, into them and mm-hmm. man, what, a, what amazing. So anyway, so that's that. So hey we're girls. going so to we have some, uh, good news and some bad yeah, news. Yeah. We've, we're like <laughs> on the, we're on the mountaintop and yeah. in, in the valley all at the same so, time. We are, yeah. we, um, are experiencing life and death, so to say. Yeah. And, um, so, which is amazing. God went before we're in a really difficult season, but God went before us and he's given us something to be. That's what's amazing about being pregnant is yeah. you're, you have this, it's, I think it's literally the definition of faith. Like faith is hoping for something unseen, but yeah. you know, you know, you know, it's there. Yeah. Like, that's so good. So pregnancy is the, almost the embodiment of faith and you are hoping for something and you know it's there, but you can't see it. And so, so we've just been in a season of yeah. birthing for a long time, but God has done some incredible work in us and changed us radically through yeah. all of it, which is amazing. That is usually how, how God works and teaches you in ways that you would have never asked, thought, or imagined. Yeah. Yeah. But humbling yourself to the process will change your entire life if you let it. Yeah. And change it for the better. So that's amazing. But with that said, you know, Darren and I, we have been on a radical, what we would, what we would describe as a radical discipleship walk of following Jesus the last eight years, I guess. And, um, and we're going to get into a lot of that story. And that's honestly what we've gotten into the two podcasts we've done for an hour and there's been no sound. (laughs) So that's okay. Uh, and so with that, this last two years, since we have moved, relocated, it's been a very difficult season for us. We have never had a home, and so we showed that on the vlog where we were purchasing this property from my grandfather, and he is still alive, which is exciting, and we got to purchase it with him and have it be a a whole family experience, and he still comes here every day and works in his wood shop, so, but it's been very difficult for us to settle in and, and actually feel home, um, which may sound funny, uh, but... I think after just wandering so long and being just with really not grounded in a tangible place, we became grounded so much in whatever God was speaking to us and wherever we were being sent, but that almost became more comfortable to just be sent and to be almost nomadic. And so to be settled and, and not settled, that is different to be planted, to be planted by the Lord and experience that has been almost very difficult to get rooted. It's taken time. Transplant shock. Yeah. Yeah. So we moved from the place that we, we met 20 something years ago. We got married in the Shenandoah Valley. We, so we had been there since we were teens, you know, 14, 15 years old. So 20 something years, 23 years. We, um, met there, fell in love there. We got married there. We had the majority of our children there. We, we just very rooted and, um, and even though we were there, we never in, in this last season of this last like seven years, we never had a home. Mm -hmm. We had commercial buildings that, or, or places we had purchased to make into homes with a thought of ministry or a thought of people coming, um, but never like a home for our family. Yeah. And so the last two years of not only moving complete, total different locations, completely different scenery, the, the swamp, swampland of Virginia, <laughs> Uh, Ezekiel 36 would say this God forsaken oh, land, man. um, it will become Eden's garden. Yeah. We're hanging on to it hard, but for two <laughs> years, 
<laughs> for two years, it's been really difficult. We're just being very transparent. Yeah, keeping it real. And so in all that, we, we also kind of felt like our discipleship journey had come to this pinnacle. Yeah. And in all that, we... Go ahead. Pinnacle and, and to the point of like, you know, where the disciples themselves uh, got to in the Bible where they their pinnacle was the cross and what they had left everything for sitting there hanging on a cross and then buried. And they were expecting so many things. And so it's a different journey for us. Like we didn't end up at this moment where we're seeing Jesus Christ physically being crucified on a cross, but we believed so much in our journey of faith. Like yeah. we left everything on the promises of the things that were spoken and taught to us. And same thing with the disciples. And so it was coming to this moment where we're just like, you know, was that, is this it? Like, what do we kind of like, what do we do now? Kind of like with yeah. them. And so, you know, we were in that crossroads and then there comes this transition. So we're just like, okay, is this like, what's, what's next? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so we found ourselves there almost a year ago. Yeah. And so we, I guess it was about a year ago we found ourselves there. And then almost a year ago, a couple of months later, we, we ended up starting a business, talked about it on the vlog, announced it. And we have, we had spent, we've spent this entire year as business owners, again, entrepreneurs, yeah. <laughs> which is what we did. That was kind of, that's just kind of been our heart since we met in high school was always to be entrepreneurs and to chase businesses and to do with serial entrepreneurship, you know, just whatever we were doing, we were doing it because ministry was really our heart. And we always wanted that to be our overflow. We never wanted to be like paid for it. We didn't think it was a vocation. Um, and then, so that was always like a passion thing. And yeah. then we wanted to, I guess a, one of our filters surprisingly, since we were in high school was that we always wanted our kids with us, which yeah. is surprising because neither one of us were raised that way and we never saw anybody raised that way. So I don't know where that came from, but I guess what Darren was saying, that was really just our calling is that that was a non-negotiable. We were going to raise our children. Nobody else was going to raise them. Yeah. And so we were going to, naturally be entrepreneur. We were going to find something yeah, to yeah, do yeah. and businesses to create, yeah. create, to become wealthy, to have our children always with us, working with us, whatever we were doing, as well as do all the things out of our overflow and our passion that we wanted to do and never be restricted. And so needless to say, we, we accepted this crazy call of come follow me eight years ago, which was not in the plans and definitely didn't line up with all the goals and aspirations. Yeah. We always thought we had for years, but, um, it totally wrecked us, changed our life, completely changed who we, who we are, but we laid down all personal identity and our names and, you know, um, everything to be rewired and to follow Jesus, which sounds super obscure and it sounded obscure to us yeah. honestly because we had been christians our entire lives so what does that mean to actually then go follow jesus um which we're going to get into a lot of those stories to just kind of break that down and help people understand yeah. and maybe confirm that you're hearing the same thing and give you permission to go live that to go accept that calling yeah. and jump out of the boat and live that crazy radical faith with abandon there's nothing like it yeah. um but anyway, for us, this was kind of like the end of the journey. We found ourselves back fishing on a boat like Peter did. And he said in John 21, mm -hmm. I'm going back fishing. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's kind of what we did. We went, we went back to business and we, we profited nothing. We reaped nothing. We caught nothing. It, it literally. John 21 verse three, Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, the disciples saw Jesus standing on the beach, but they couldn't see who he was. He called out, friends, have you caught any fish? Then he said, throw, throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you'll get plenty of fish. So they did. They couldn't draw on the net because there were so many fish in it. So after a year, we literally found ourselves fishing all night and you know 
it's like this encounter happens to us. Like we're looking at each other and we've not, and Jesus, like, have you caught anything? And so in that moment, we just realized like, man, we're back doing what God, because it was Peter who he had called originally when he called him, he was fishing with his father. So he was a professional fisherman. That was his career. That was his job. That was his identity. And so once he could not figure out what, what Jesus's next step was, because he was supposed to establish this kingdom that they were all going to be, you know, ruling in. And so once he couldn't figure it out, he's just like, I'm going back fishing because it's like, I got a life to live, you know, I got, like, what am I going to do? And so that was us. And so, you know, that was a moment for us that God made it make sense, you know, and not only did he make it make sense, but it's what we talk about all the time. This is not just a historical book for you to read and get some stories from and understand world history or biblical history. Like this is a book. This is the living, breathing word of God. Um, this is a book that you can find yourself in. Yeah. And so, um, and God will literally confirm <clears throat> your life and what you're doing and what he's saying to you in the word of God. Yeah. And he only does that by way of the spirit of God yeah. and opening up your eyes and opening yeah. up your ears and using it in ways that you could never ever comprehend with your natural mind. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. And that's why it's the most powerful thing yeah. in it in existence. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, it is so, it is so powerful, but um, yeah, and so we're not we, just saying that just to give context to it. That's what literally what Jesus, when he came out of the wilderness, when it was time for him to go into the ministry, cause he had been hidden for 30 years. And when he came out, he was handed the scroll of Isaiah and he started reading it and he's like, that's me. I'm here. Which is so and funny so that you're saying that because himself. John the Baptist said the same thing. Yeah. In Isaiah. In yeah, Isaiah. Exactly. He's like, I'm, I'm, that, I'm voice. that voice crying out in the wilderness. I'm that voice crying out in the wilderness, so, in the wilderness. And in that same time, Jesus is saying, and I'm, I'm this, guy, I'm, I'm this Isaiah guy spoke about. anointed with the spirit of yeah. the Lord to proclaim liberty, yeah. like to proclaim freedom to the captives. So this Bible is for you to find yourself in. It's for you to confirm your life in. It's for you to hear the word of God. It's for you to gain wisdom. It's for you to understand how to fear the Lord. It's just so many things. I actually besides. love the way you said to Chapman one time, you broke this down to our child who's eight and it was not the swing set. It was something you were building with directions, mm -hmm. it had a lot of pieces to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And you said, can you imagine if they sent us all these pieces and no directions as to how to assemble this and put mm -hmm. it together? We would, pieces would be lost. It would not, you would not yeah. construct it. You wouldn't by the, the, the way it should be yeah. constructed and you would be very frustrated because it would be very difficult. Yeah. Like the Bible is the instructions, directions. the directions to, to life, life yeah. living life. Yeah. It will guide you, tell you what to do, give you clarity in times 100%. of, um, um, confusion, comfort in times of destruction, uh, peace in times of war. I mean, it like, that is absolutely what yeah. the Bible is. And we only discovered that when we approached it with a humble heart and asked God to yeah. speak to us and let us read it in a way we've never read it before because we had been raised Christian. We had been raised in church. So you'd been taught the Bible yeah. and you'd been preached the Bible. Yeah. But you very quickly, if you approach the Lord with a humble heart and a new mind and a new set of eyes. And you say, teach me, yeah. teach me, Lord. I, I literally don't know. I'm going to start in the beginning. Just <laughs> teach yeah. me what you want me, me to, to hear with this. Yeah. So a, a year into this <clears throat> thing, and it's crazy because we had a team of people around us that had been successful in this business, you know, and, and they're right in their different companies that they've worked for. We had what we have brought to the table, which we've, you know, gained a little bit of success doing certain things. Um, hence the reason why we had money to invest into a company for a year. And so there was, there should have been no reason why there were no fish in the net. And yeah. so it was that then and there we knew like, holy camoli. And then what came next is exactly the same thing of what came next for the disciples. It's just like, do you love me? You know, uh, feed my sheep, take care of my lambs or feed my sheep. And so... 
you know, that was the moment for us where we knew, like, we need to put our cloak back on. Like, what are we doing out here fishing? We died to self. We died to our identity. We've given that up. We, we left seven, eight years ago and recklessly, people would say, uh, follow Jesus. But no, it wasn't reckless. Like, the only, the most, the safest place on planet Earth is at the feet of Jesus. And so that's when you, that's why, you know, you almost get to a point when, you know, Jesus is beginning to, you know, like he did with the disciples, he left them and then sent them out. Mm. They're just like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. like, I want to be with you. I yeah. left to follow you and to be with you everywhere. What do you mean you're leaving? And so you just get so attached. Your identity is so wrapped into just purely following Jesus. Like, that's all I want to do. And that's where we were. And then there's just there was just this weird transition period. And for the disciples, it was, you know, 40 days. For us, it was a couple years of him bringing us here. And, and he was just putting us on the potter's wheel and he was doing whatever. And so, you know, once he got to the point where, um, you know, he had our attention and, you know, he came and we found ourselves in that story, uh, we just knew now was the time. This was like our moment of coming out of the wilderness, like Jesus came out of the wilderness or you know, being sent into the wilderness, like John the Baptist was sent into the wilderness. And we always have tried to figure it out, even though we've kind of just like let God have his way. It's been very obscure, our journey. But there's been so many moments of us just trying to figure it out. And what we're just, you know, uh, relinquishing our just human thoughts, because his ways and thoughts are higher. We're just realizing like, the call over our life is kind of something similar to a John the Baptist where we're just this obscure voice in an obscure place, you know, crying out. Like, prepare the way. Prepare the way. It's just this me this obscure message. I mean, and that's the thing. Like, and the so, only thing that can ever realign the brokenness of where our world is today or our country and nation or the nations is, you know, a Jesus movement and a move of God on the earth, a move of Jesus on the earth. And where, um, and that's what John the Baptist, that's what preparing the way looks like. When people's hearts are prepared, those things realign themselves. Yeah. Like the broken things in society start that that's the only thing that can actually realign it. It's yeah. not preaching to fix this issue, fix this issue, fix. You can't fix all those issues yeah. unless you fix the root of what's producing all that fruit on that yeah. tree. And so, you know, our very small footprint in the world is to just be ministers of a new covenant. Yeah. And the new covenant is... Jesus. Yeah. And so, you know, we've just accepted that this is our, this is our calling over our life. You know, some would call it ministry, um, the best way to understand it. And so, you know, we closed down our business after, you know, we literally had no pennies left <laughs> to invest into it. So we had to make the hard decision to close it down. Um, and you know, it's, we're still, you know, processing everything. Uh, but we know that God is faithful uh, he, he is the ultimate, uh, restorer of all things. Uh, well, yeah. And anything. also he just like in Deuteronomy, anything. he says he, it, he's the one that actually gives you the ability to create wealth. Exactly. And in Haggai, he also says, I'm the one that, uh, I am not allowing you to reap yeah. actually everything you've sown. I'm not, I am blowing away half your harvest mm. <laughs> because your priorities are not in proper alignment. My house is lying in ruins. You're worried about your homes and your businesses. Yeah. And, and so when people who are called to be spiritual leaders are not properly aligned or they're not properly operating within mm -hmm. what they should be operating in, there will be a intentional lack mm. that causes a pressing yeah. to get your attention. Yeah. I mean, the lack that we experienced in this last year was beyond like human comprehension. Yeah. It should not have been. Yeah. Um, it just made no sense. But it's that, those are the things you only know are spiritual. Yeah. The, this is only a spiritual issue yeah. that we are not reaping anything. Yeah. Um, 
And it's, you know, it was God trying to get our attention. Very, it was Jesus it's literally sitting on the, the beach. <laughs> he said, hey. Friends, yeah. Yeah. friends calling yeah. out to you. Like, you I love you. I've, I've journeyed with you the last years, years. Oh. You, I've spent every waking moment with you. I've taught you everything about the kingdom. How's your fishing going? <laughs> <laughs> all of them fishing miracles I did, you out trying to get it still on a boat in water. I mean, the, one, of one of the things I love, one of the things is fish with two fish. I can show you how to get as many fish you need. <laughs> if you go read John 21, is that what it is? Yeah. John 21. The, my, I told Darren, my, one of my favorite parts of that whole story out. is that Jesus is cooking fish for them Yeah. on the beach. What they're trying to get all night. He's got the, ready for them. This is mind blowing to me. Like, where did he get it? <laughs> Just watching. Just and, watching those fish. you know, um, so anyway, we can so, find, yeah, so we can find, uh, joy yeah, somehow I mean, laughing, ta- talking yeah. about it. It's and definitely the valley of the shadow of death, but you know, we're just not going to fear any evil. Um, and it's, it's a, and we appreciate like sharing our, we, we're transparent leaders, if you want to yeah. say that. Uh, we, we are not the type of leaders that honestly, that's why the vlog started. We felt that the Lord was telling us to say to people, come follow me, come watch our life, come uh, see behind the curtain of what, how we operate as a family and how we raise our children and what beliefs we have. And, and beyond just what you see on a weekend service from most people that are spiritual leaders today, you don't know anything about their life. And, um, that was honestly why we even started vlogging. We are, we are actually very uncomfortable with it. We are not like, Oh yeah, we want to show everything about our life. We're actually very private. Um, but we felt like that was something that we were being pressed to show that transparency. And now there's this, you know, huge bank of videos for over a year of just cataloging, showing our, our family life and the way we operate and do things and a snapshot, obviously, but that was really behind the vlog. And now this is, you know, for us, this is why we share that transparency because a lot of people don't share these struggles and things while they're going through it. They share it later and it's like a success story already. And so people are always like, man, you know, what if we saw them from the beginning when everything was nothing, when they were losing everything? Like, what if we were listening to them then? What what would it sound like? So we've chosen to be transparent and show, show that to people. We've chosen to live that life on the vlog. And so now we're, we're choosing to yeah. let people know what those updates are. So here we are. are. We're Darren and Monica <laughs> and, um, this is Homeland. Homeland is a place. Homeland is a ministry. Um, you'll hear a lot more about Homeland and the vision that God has given us for this physical place that he has planted us. Um, we're excited about it. Uh, the transition is not easy, but it's amazing because now we're just fully in. We're all in. Um, and, you know, sometimes you know, it's, 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 this, is the, this is the journey. And, you know, honestly, things aren't going to always be pretty. Things aren't going to always go your way. Uh, you're going to lose things. You're going to gain things. And I think that uh, the, just like what we were reading this morning, uh, as long as we remain in a posture of just expectancy and radical faith, I, I think that's when the church becomes unstoppable. Hmm. Um, when we expect God to do what he said in his word, and we don't only just expect him, but we put our faith on the line, believing that you can take, you can preserve me in this fire, but if not, you're still God. Hmm. Like a church that's fully devoted to him. Like not one that's devoted to him when they're building, when he's building them buildings or bringing them more people or giving them promotions in their job, but one that's devoted to him in a time where it's just like, I'm walking in a fire right now. You should save me before I get in that thing. Yeah. So you're going to make me walk in this fire. And I have the radical faith to not just bow down in a moment to preserve my life. Cause that's the smart thing to do. It's absolutely ludicrous 
to, to openly walk yourself into a burning fire. Um, but one that has the radical faith to do that and declare to the people in front of them, God will preserve me from this fire, but if he doesn't, he's still God, and that's what I'm going to leave you out with. And now here I go. Like that type of courage and that type of faith. I mean, what you're talking about is a mature wife, a mature bride, a mature church. Sure. I mean, it is sure, because, you're, sure, because you, you think about like our marriage. Moments. Yeah, we yeah. haven't had that, that. We've had moments where we. we but that, but that should be the essence of where the church is today, <laughs> two thousand years later, and that's why God sends people. And I'm not saying oh, sends us only sends sends people. We're just an example of that. Mm -hmm. People that have been tested and tried and refined, and fortified and persevered his discipling and leading and rewiring of kingdom culture he then turns and sends these people to the church like he talks about in Ephesians and says these are the gifts now I'm sending to the church they're people yeah. and these people I'm sending are to they are to teach the church they're to lead the church they're to empower the church because the church needs to become a mature bride because that's who my son's coming back for and the that is done through the fortifying of, of our faith and we just like Jesus in Hebrews Jesus learned obedience to God through his suffering why why would the Son of God have to suffer to learn obedience to his father why you know but it's like those are the times where you have to submit in so much crazy trust and just know that God is good and he is a good father and on the other side of this, it is going to be, other, on the other side of the refining fire is more glory to him. And what you're saying then is a mature bride who then storms the gates of hell and, and can't be defeated. And that's the entire goal of anyone who has laid their life down for the church is that what would rise up out of ashes is just an unstoppable movement of people that can't be stopped. Yeah. So that's it. So On welcome. earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> yeah, welcome to home. Welcome to So we're going to do a lot more of these talks. And we're releasing some talks that we actually recorded like two years ago, so it's like a different setting. So, like, if we need this, like, we just want to release it because we know we're not the only ones that need it. So, yeah. Um, we're releasing those talks, um, and then we're going to do more of these talks, which will be about our story, which will be about the Word of God, which will be about where we're at, what's going on. So, I yeah. uh, hope you join us. It's going to be fun.